The UK wants to build 300,000 new homes every single year, but some of them can't even last longer than 50 years. That is outrageous. Why is one of the richest countries on earth purposely building bad houses? What I'm about to show you might actually blow your mind. This is gonna be interesting. I'm a construction manager working on a 22 million pound construction site where we are building 52 new houses. And trust me, I'm gonna show you every single reason why you feel like your new build doesn't feel that high quality. One of the biggest reasons people feel like new builds are bad is because of speed. If houses are being built quickly, corners must be cut. And that assumption is fair, but is also completely wrong. I see how houses are built every single day and the things I'm gonna talk about might worry you a lot. As the video goes on, the information becomes more and more confidential. And at the very end of the video, I'm gonna give you three actionable steps you can literally just take away to complete completely avoid buying a poorly built new house. This is information you can't find anywhere else. So I encourage you to stay to the very end to get as much value as possible. The steel frame for the new houses that we're using on this construction site are used because then they're easy to install. You want an interesting fact? It only takes three days to install the frame for the ground floor of this house. That means for just over a week, we can make a frame for a, for a house that will be a home for four to six people. Now, when you think about that, you start to appreciate a little bit more why we are building these new builds the way we are. On average, it takes around 32 weeks to build a new house in the UK. And honestly, that's actually pretty impressive if you ask me. I mean, you can just see the frame. You can see how small it is. It's a lightweight frame. You can see we've got the DPC then. The metal frame sits on top of that. It gets prefabricated in a factory. It gets brought onto site and then the steel fixers will just lift it into place and drill it into the slab. The reality of it is people make an unfair comparison. They compare a metal framed house with a traditional brick and block frame. And you can't compare them because they are different materials. They have different properties and their benefits are different. A metal frame is so much quicker to install than a brick and block frame. We can build a block work frame house that can last longer, but then people would complain that we're not building them quick enough. There are pros and cons to everything, and that is something people must realize. People will always find a way to complain. That's just reality, right? But a fact that you can't dismiss is that a lifespan for a metal frame can be anywhere between 60 to 170 years. That is such a big difference in, in terms of numbers, right? The houses we're building on this construction site will be at the upper range of those numbers and it all comes down to the detailing and how the wall is built. You see, one of the biggest disadvantages with metal frame is its corrosion. But if it has a lot of insulation like the houses we're building on my construction site have, then they're gonna be okay because they're gonna be protected and insulated, which is gonna stop the cold weather attacking them, stopping them, preventing them from corroding. Personally, I think this is incredible, right? To buy a metal frame that can last up to 170 years, that only takes 32 weeks to build, is pretty mind blowing. And if you disagree with me, you can argue in the comments below, right? But I don't know, I think you're gonna wanna wait and hear about point number two, because I think that's even more worrying than metal frames. Like I said, at the end of the video, I'm going to give you three ways to completely avoid buying a bad new build. But without further ado, let's get into point number two. But just before that, if you are enjoying the video so far, please consider subscribing because I'm a small channel and it means so much to me. Thank you. These houses that I'm building right now, um, on this construction site, we have uh, the government, the local authority come out and they inspect these houses and they have great details of knowledge of what a good detail, what a good piece of work looks like and what a not so good piece of work looks like. They know the measurements of cavities. They know the overlap of the felt and batten on the roof. They know all of these different measurements, these things. The point I'm trying to get across guys is the, the, the people that come to this site are good. They know what they're looking at. Which is great because that means they have the power to stop works if they find any defects which is great because it ensures that the houses we build and the houses people buy is to a high quality. But a lot of people 
aren't so good. A lot of people aren't too sure what they're looking at. And if you have a poor quality inspector, then what that means is they could allow something to proceed even when it's not high quality because they don't know much different themselves. Now you can understand the impact that this has on the construction industry. We now have quality inspectors approving works that are actually incorrect. And then we're the ones buying these houses, living in them and suffering with their defects, which obviously isn't a good thing. Keeping on theme with the government, having poor quality inspectors is one thing. It's another thing though, having deadlines and feeling immense pressure by the government. Now I'm not saying this is the case for the site I'm working on, but it's definitely the case for builders around the UK. On the site that I'm currently working on, we approximately have around two and a half years to build 52 new houses, which is a good deadline. Don't get me wrong, it's intense. It can be hard to be on site and to get this, this goal of ours complete, but it's also achievable. But you look at some other sites and they're building the same number of houses or even more in half the duration and half the time period. You, you can only imagine the intensity and the, 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 the pressure you would feel on site every day to build 70, 80 houses in in a year, in less than a year. That almost ensures quality is going to drop, which isn't a good thing. We've spoken about some scary things. At the very end of the video, I'm gonna give you guys three ways you can completely avoid buying a bad house. But as for now, let's touch on probably the scariest point of them all. You see, UK house building is dominated by a small group of major developers. And these guys like making their profit. Let me explain. I'm not gonna name companies, I'm not gonna but, um, suggest uh, who these companies or who these contractors might be. But there are a lot of housing developers in the UK who own lots of land. They own lots of fields and they've, they've got spreadsheets up. They've got all of these statistics showing where in the UK are people buying houses the most? Are they building them in, I don't know, Yorkshire? Are they building them in Exeter? Are they buying them in Yorkshire? Are they buying them in Exeter? Are they buying them in, in London? Are they looking into Scotland? Are they looking into Wales? They're seeing it, in what towns and cities are people buying houses the most. And then because they own so much land, they're able to say, right, we know that there is a lot of demand of houses being bought in this area. Let's build houses over there. So they will literally go onto the lands that they own, they will build their houses on top of that land and they will sell them because they know they are there is demand in housing in specifically in that area. So to a degree, they could control the market. They can, they do control the market because they have such a lot of power within the industry. And this isn't good. This isn't good for housing. This isn't good for people living in the housing. This isn't good for the industry. It's not good for the government. This isn't good other than the house builders who profit from it. Because they don't want to build houses if there isn't a guarantee that these houses will sell. But if they know that there is a high demand in a local area, then they can do so. They can sell the houses, make money, make profit, and maybe get away with, and maybe get away with making lots of money. Now, it's not a very good thing, but it's the truth and it's an important insight I don't think a lot of people actually have. And for the moment we've all been waiting for, here are three things that you should follow to make sure that you avoid buying a new house. The first thing is to do your own research. There's a website called the HBF, also known as the Home Builders Federation, and it's based off of real reviews of what customers say after they have bought the house. This company collects all of this information and ranks them out of five stars. So you can do this information. I'll leave a link in the description below, but you can go and see what housing developers have, uh, how many houses these housing developers has built and how many stars they have achieved. If they have built over 2000 houses in the UK and they're a five star house builder, then you're gonna be pretty sure that um, the, the, the house that you will buy if it's from this contractor is gonna be a good quality. But a lot of people don't do these this research. A lot of building, a lot of housing contractors promote, they, they proudly say that they are a three star house builder. But then the public will go and buy a house from a three-star house builder and then get annoyed that it's poor quality. But it's like, if you've just done your research, you would understand what you're getting yourself into before you buy the house. Secondly, you wanna make sure that the 
developer that has built your house has signed up to a new homes quality code. Now th this new homes quality code makes the contractor follow certain rules if there are issues. If there are problems wrong with the house, they have to follow this quality code to ensure that you as a house owner are protected. And thirdly, look at what people say online. It's one thing looking at the HBF website, but it's another thing going to Trustpilot or Google reviews or looking at forums and Facebook pages. I mean, don't get me wrong, this is obvious advice, but a lot of people don't do it. They just assume the way you have to see the housing industry is like the way you should see the car industry. You can see a Mercedes, you can see a Porsche, you can see a, a Land Rover, and you will know they are built to a high quality. But then you can look at a, a Peugeot 208 that was built in 2008 and you 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 can understand that it won't be as good as a bmw that was built last year right i know we will have our car preferences but you understand the point it's the exact same thing in the construction industry you have housing developers which are good that have pride that are are, are well reviewed and you have housing developers that aren't don't blur the lines, don't make a gray area, don't assume all house builders are the same. What I have seen recently is that there are a lot of construction companies that are moving into housing because it's a market that's growing, it's a market that has never been more popular, which means that there are a lot more companies building new houses. And then I'm not saying that that means that there's gonna be lots of bad houses, but what I mean is that, there are a lot of different construction companies and just being aware which ones are the good ones and which ones you may want to avoid. That's all I'm saying. And I think doing your own research is very, very valuable. But that's it from me. I hope you have gotten value from this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you have, please consider subscribing because it means so much to me as a small channel. And without further ado, I will see you in the next one. Take care.